Professor Santri. Thank, <coughs> thank you. I am honored uh, to be here to speak with, with you about uh, ABN. As you know, when uh, there is a collapse of the head, there is the need uh, to have a total hip uh, replacement. But uh, there are problems uh, with uh, uh, total hips uh, in uh, AVN because, because of, for the age, uh, young patients, bone quality often is a bad bone quality, some necrosis is always there also in the neck, and osteoporosis, uh, especially in young patients. <coughs> so uh, there is uh, an increase of uh, loosening and uh, uh, so that they are young, as you know, in young patients, uh, the, uh, the revision rate is uh, higher than normally. So what we are looking for is a, of a long-lasting prosthesis, which preserves the bone stock as much as possible to uh, allow a conservative revision surgery and uh, a, uh, a prosthesis with low percentage of complication. So there are different options, and let's see what about uh, is telling us the literature about the conventional stems. In the old papers, there was uh, the idea that uh, the overall failure rate was four times greater than in osteoarthritis. Here another work in which uh, they speak about 28.6% at a 10 year follow up, which is very high. But more recent uh, works, they don't speak uh, so badly, and they tell that probably there is not a big difference between AVN and uh, uh, osteoarthritis. And here, another article, etiology did not affect the final outcome. The problem of conventional stems especially in young patients, is that uh, if you have to do a revision, you need a long stem, and this is not a good idea for younger patients. In resurfacing, <coughs> also resurfacing, they speak about uh, some more uh, revision rate uh, than in osteoarthritis. Here, a 5% uh, survivorship at uh, 3.5 years. Here, 6.8% of revision at 6.1 6 years follow-up. And the Australian Register, too, also if it is not uh, statistically significant, speaks about 6.3% failure rate in AVN in comparison with 4.1% in osteoarthritis. And then there are the general problems of resurfacing. As you know, uh, according to gender, at five years follow-up, the difference was uh, three times higher in women than in men. And according to age, in, in elderly patient, patient older than 65 years, uh, there was uh, an 11.2% of uh, revision rate. That's uh, uh, quite different from all arthritis, which is completely different. Uh, but there are also other things. It seems that it's going worse with the years. For example, from the ASR resurfacing, prosthesis uh, has been rejected from the market because of, of the result of the British Arthropathy Register, revision rate at three years, 5%, at five years, 12%. So the other option are short implants. Many, many companies, they are doing now short implants. There are at least 20 of them. Here are a few of the most uh, known. But uh, regarding AVN, there is not uh, a, a particular uh, bibliography. Uh, it's just uh, called in the, in, the, in the papers. And here with the Mayo Clinic, which uh, was for maybe one of the first, uh, revision rate 7.4%. And uh, the CFP implant uh, it was a better revision rate 
4.4%, and this was a, is a prosthesis which is uh, normally used only in young patients. And there is a very short, short follow-up uh, uh, paper of uh, Diermont about the Proxima HID, 23 patients, zero revision rate. My personal experience, between 1995, I was just doing only conventional stems. Since 1995, I did a, a trial with different types of, uh, of uh, prosthesis. Uh, 180 hips, hips uh, 87 uh, with conventional implants, uh, 12 uh, in resurfacing, 87 with short implants normal etiology. Regarding conventional stems, I began with longer stems. Then I was looking for something more conservative as uh, the IPS stem. I had 4.7% uh, of revision rate, but naturally if there was a loosening, I had to use a longer stem, and this is a problem. My experience in hip resurfacing is very short because I did only 12 cases. Uh, the 12th, uh, in the 12th case, I had uh, a fracture after one month. After two months, uh, I have uh, the letter from the lawyer, so I finished with my resurfacing, and I, uh, I am happy that I finished at the time. So regarding the other short implants, uh, 24 CFP in 18 patients and 63 Proxima patient. <coughs> this is a partially neck preserving prosthesis with a short stem. It's, uh, the indication is only in younger patients with uh, good bone stock. Loosening rate was 4%. And then the proximal hip, uh, which is a stemless implant uh, with uh, lateral flare support. This is probably the first implant design according to the re-examination of uh, hip biomechanics done by FETO, in which he was the demonstration that compression forces act uh, on the, the com on also on the lateral cortex. That means there is a circumferential stress distribution. And the demonstration by Peter Walker that if you use uh, an implant with uh, lateral flare support, uh, all the stresses are distributed just, proxim just uh, proximally. And so you don't need uh, to have uh, a stem because all the stresses are distributed and you see this good bone remodeling our, about, uh, around this prosthesis. So my personal update in general uh, with this process is uh, over, uh, uh, over 464 uh, implants with a follow-up of 7.2 years. It's very good. I, have, uh, I use it now as my primary hip. I had only two revision for deep infection and zero aseptic loosening. I, um, and regard, coming back to uh, uh, AVN, I did 73 hips, mean follow-up of 7.5 years. My revision rate was zero. And I use uh, this prosthesis uh, <coughs> in younger patients, in middle-aged patients. You see always a good remodeling around the prosthesis but also after fracture with osteoporotic bone and also in very old patients with osteoporotic bone. And you see here on the DEXA study how good is the bone remodeling around the prosthesis. In conclusion, <coughs> in my opinion, current indication for a conventional stem uh, can be this. Uh, uh, conventional uh, uh, stems are certainly still a good solution, especially in more uh, in elderly patients and in case uh, of osteoporosis or in a failed resurfacing or short stem prosthesis. 
the problem is uh, uh, that if you have to do a revision, you need uh, a long stem. Uh, I don't believe that the resurfacing has indication in AVN, but uh, the future would say this uh, better than me. Uh, regarding short stems, uh, if uh, there is a good bone stock in patients under 55, 60 years, uh, there is a good result, uh, but they need uh, a long-term follow-up and more uh, papers uh, on AVN. Uh, in my opinion, uh, a, a prosthesis uh, like this one with uh, a circumferential or proximal tra bone uh, transmission has uh, uh, any indication except for uh, severe osteoporosis. Naturally, with uh, the more modern uh, coupling like ceramic, ceramic, uh, ceramic polyethylene, ceramic or metal. Thank you. Okay, the floor is open for questions to Professor Santori concerning this interesting talk. One first observation can be that uh, a vascular necrosis by nature will uh, probably behave differently uh, in terms of prosthetic fixation since the causing disease is different from degenerative joint disease. Uh, so they need to be followed in a separate manner. And uh, from what we learned during this meeting, I think uh, one could question whether uh, resurfacing has any place in any patient. It seems like uh, there is uh, considerable warning signs that should make us all reconsider. Well, the, the problem with resurfacing is that while uh, in osteoarthritis, uh, in elderly patients, is going uh, better with the time in comparison with a young patient in resurfacing with the time there is an increase of uh, of loosening uh, which uh, and uh, also osteolysis right right there are a number of problems with the resurfacing that should make us all reconsider okay i think